Directed by Paco Plaza and starring the ravishing Sandra S. Cassina, there's no denying the fact that Veronica is a truly disturbing film and journey into the paranormal. The film is a Spanish language film and is loosely based on true events from the 1991 Vallecas case where Estefania Gutierrez Lasario died mysteriously after she used a Ouija board. The film is based on a report filed by the senior police inspector who worked on the case. We're about to provide you with an in-depth look into this frightening tale, so please enjoy this detailed synopsis. The film opens with a harrowing emergency call via voiceover to 112, the European equivalent to North America's 911. We opened in the city of Madrid, and it's June 15th, 1991. It's a rainy night, and we see a police and emergency vehicles converge on a residential apartment complex. Police officers and an older detective referred to in Spain as a senior inspector emerge from their vehicle and immediately head inside the building. The senior inspect, played by actor Chema Adeva, is very concerned and appears to feel that there is something ominous about this particular call and that something just isn't right. Senior Inspector Romero and other officers breach the front door, guns drawn, and make their way through an apartment. This is Veronica's apartment, and a feeling of dread washes over the officers as they make their way through the small space. When the officers and Senior Inspector Romero enter a room further into the apartment, what they see shocks them to their cores. Plaza, the film's director, however, deliberately chooses not to show the audience what it is that the officers are seeing and leaves it to the audience's imaginations. A woman's screams pierce through via voiceover. There's a quick cut to a scene with Veronica lying on her bed, with her mouth stretched wide open. Only she isn't screaming, she's yawning. We can't help but notice that the young Veronica is wearing braces, and text on the screen tells us that it's three days earlier, June 12th, 19 1991, a sunny summer's day. Veronica gets out of bed and we're then taken through her daily routine. Veronica has three younger siblings, Lucia, played by actor Bruna Gonzalez, Irene, played by actor Claudia Placer, and Antonito, played by actor Ivan Chavero. Veronica starts the day by getting herself and her siblings ready for school, and as they get ready, the siblings and Veronica discuss an impending solar eclipse that is expected later that day. Veronica makes her way to her mother, Anna's bedroom next. Anna is played by actor Anna Torrent. Once inside the darkened room, Veronica sees her mother sleeping soundly and we're able to see a packet of pills on her mother's nightstand. Veronica decides to look through a nearby pile of papers and photographs. She finds a photo of her late father, takes it, and exits the room. Next, we cut to a scene of Veronica sitting inside of her high school astronomy class. The teacher lectures about the sun, the moon, and planet Earth and talks to students about the impending eclipse, which is, at this point, is only minutes away. The teacher also discusses the Mayans, eclipses, and human sacrifice. Students, faculty, and nuns pour out of their classrooms and head outside to view the unique solar phenomenon. But Veronica and two of her friends decide to head to the basement of the school for a makeshift seance instead. The scenes of the seance are perfectly intercut with scenes of the school children, faculty, and nuns watching the eclipse outside. At this point, we're also introduced to a peculiar and frightening character known as Sister Death, played by actor Consuelo Trujillo. Sister Death, as she's referred to in the credits, is a blind nun that gives off a seriously creepy vibe due largely to her very scary eyes. Sister Death looks up at the eclipse and seems connected to it somehow. In the basement, Veronica and her girlfriends chose the perfect spot for their seance, and Veronica produces a Ouija board and the photograph of her late father that she took from her mother's room. Veronica puts a small glass upside down, and she and the girls begin asking the board whether or not they're alone. Soon after the questions begin, the glass begins sliding across the board, landing on various letters. After a minute, the glass stops at the center of the board and the three girls put a finger on the glass. Outside, as the eclipse becomes fully formed, the students watch in awe through special glasses. In the basement, there's a burning sensation on the tips of the girls' fingers touching the glass, and the girls are scared. Veronica drips blood from her hand onto the board, and then the board splits in half. As the seance comes to an end, Veronica loses consciousness. Fear Fearful that something's wrong with Veronica, her friends run to get help. In the next scene, we see Veronica in the school nurse's office undergoing an examination. The nurse asks Veronica a series of questions. Through this, we come to learn a little about Veronica. We learn that she's 15 and that she hasn't yet menstruated. The nurse chalks up Veronica's fainting spell as a case of iron deficiency and essentially sends her on her way. As Veronica leaves school, she notices sister death and the two look at one another momentarily. It's at this point in the film that the tension really 
starts to pick up, and we get this feeling of impending doom and foreshadowing. Veronica heads home, and once inside, she examines the Ouija board and hides it in a safe place. Veronica sits with her siblings at the dinner table, and they proceed to eat. Now, here's where things take a turn for the creepy and weird. As Veronica lifts a piece of red meat to her mouth, her body becomes rigid, and she trembles. She struggles to put the piece of meat into her mouth, and her siblings grow very concerned and frightened. Eventually, Veronica managed to get the piece of meat into her mouth, but she only spits it up. Later on, Veronica examines herself in a mirror and notices what appears to be an inexplicable handprint on her shoulder. A short while later, the siblings watch a music video for a song called Centella, and Veronica turns it off because it's bath time. Veronica gives her little brother Antonito a bath, and it all appears well until she starts hearing some very ominous and bizarre sounds emanating from another area of the apartment. As Veronica checks out the noise, a door locks behind her and she hears Antonito screaming in the tub. Veronica manages to get past the door and hurries into the bathroom, only to find Antonito has been scalded by hot water. A little later, Veronica is near the TV set, and unbeknownst to her, there is a reflection on the TV. It's the figure of a man. After a crazy day, Veronica is finally able to get some rest and finds herself laying in bed awake, and staring up at some glow-in-the-dark stickers of the stars and a crescent moon on her ceiling. Veronica hears her name being called and notices her late father's entity, nude, in a corner of her room, calling out her name. She's terrified. Several pairs of black, ghoulish arms reach out from inside the bed and subdue Veronica. The following day, Veronica finds herself back in the basement of the school and speaking with Sister Death, who cautions her to perform the seance with her girlfriends again and finally say goodbye to the entity, or it will never leave her and her siblings alone. Sister Death instructs Veronica to focus on protecting her younger siblings. Later that night, Veronica has a macabre dream about her siblings literally eating her alive. When she wakes, she finds blood on her mattress and realizes that she's started to menstruate. Veronica tries to enlist the help of her two girlfriends to recreate the seance, and they're too busy partying with boys to care and refuse to help. At this point, Veronica is starting to get really desperate, and so she enlists the help of her siblings to help recreate the seance in the hopes of finally saying goodbye to the entity once and for all. But things don't go as planned, and the seance goes completely haywire. The seance only angers the entity, and it lashes out with ferocity. Anna, Veronica's mother, is always working and doesn't see any of this. An all-out battle between Veronica and the entity ensues inside the apartment and its absolute pandemonium. The entity fixates on Antonito and traps him inside the bathroom. Veronica calls 112 and requests emergency assistance. She breaks into the bathroom, grabs Antonito, and rushes out of the apartment, carrying him with Irene and Lucia following closely behind. Irene and Lucia make it safely outside, but Veronica realizes she isn't carrying Antonito after all. She's been beaten by the entity's trickery and rushes back into the apartment as police vehicles race to the scene. Anna notices the vehicle speeding past her diner and runs home. Inside the apartment, Veronica finds Antonito hiding in a closet. He's safe. The officers and Senior Inspector Romero rush in and find Veronica. At last, we see what Plaza chose not to show us at the start of the film. Veronica levitates off of the floor. Her body is contorted and her mouth is inhumanely stretched wide. The film ends with Senior Inspector Romero typing up his report, which was the basis for the film. We also learn that it was the first time in Spain's history that the police had ever dealt with the paranormal occurrence and that Senior Inspector Romero retired shortly after the case. Thank you for listening and watching. More exciting and informative videos are on the way.